Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad to welcome you back to our show again this week. You know, we're really glad for people like you that are interested in what's happening in our cities. Because it is important for good government, for city residents, city councils, mayors, even city staff to all have back and forth ideas and sharing their concerns or what they like about their city. So we're glad that you've, been, you've joined us. If you haven't seen us before, we will have information on from one or more of the cities in our CCX's viewing area to fill us in on what's current and what's going to be happening in the future. And then from time to time, we'll have things about different departments in the city, so you'll learn a little bit more about that. And we're very happy tonight to welcome Captain Todd Hessman. He's in charge of New Hope's Police Reserve Unit. Thank and you. a lot of people probably don't even know what the Police Reserve is. I know I know a lot more now than I did before I started <laughs> setting things up for our show. Yeah, that's true. Oftentimes I will uh, be mistaken for a sworn police officer. Uh -huh. And they're not the same thing. We, we do different things. We are volunteers. Right. And uh, we actually have different uniforms, but people don't, aren't aware of that see a uniform and they think, oh, you must be in the police department. Huh? Uh, right, and that's just a quick note, at least in New Hope, if you see a black uniform, okay. that's a sworn police officer. Uh -huh. If you see a light blue uniform like I'm wearing, then I'm either a reserve officer or a community service officer. Now, why did you join in the, the police reserve in New Hope? Well, that's a good question. I, um, I first joined about 12 years ago, uh -huh. and uh, it was when my neighbor, uh -huh. uh, who, I, who I actually didn't know. I hadn't met him. He'd, yeah. he'd been uh, in my neighborhood, and I met him at the park when we had our kids oh, down sure. at the park. And uh, he said, hey, I think I've seen you around. Um, have you ever thought about joining the police reserves? Ah. And I, I had no idea what the police reserves <laughs> were. Right. So I said, mm, that sounds interesting. Um, what is it exactly? Yeah. Do, you know, do you have a gun? Do you go... You know, do you have to go to training? You know, so right, I had, I had right. a few questions, and he explained to me a little bit about it, and uh, <clears throat> and I thought, you know, I kind of like the idea of volunteering oh, for my right, community. Right. Um, I, maybe this isn't the right time, but I I started thinking about it then, right. and I actually didn't join then because I was starting a, a school program, but four years later. Uh, I ran into him again. Oh, I think his sure. daughters were selling Girl Scout cookies yeah. or something, and he came to my door, and I, and he said, hey, I'd asked you once about joining ah, the police right, reserves. Right. And I, I said, yeah, and I was thinking of doing it. And I probably could now because ah, I'd finished my program. Right, right. And so I joined then. That was in 2007. Sure. I thought maybe we'd start out briefly, because obviously you weren't there then, but tell us a little bit about when and why the New <clears> Hope <throat> Police Reserve Unit got started. How long? How long have they been part of the city? Okay. Well, uh, it, it's been around since 1963. Oh, that's quite and, a while. And uh, I have to admit to only knowing this by secondhand knowledge because I wasn't born yet. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, but they started it as a a, a service organization oh, sure. to assist the police department, and that's usually what a reserve okay. unit does, right? And so a lot of what we talk about for New Hope is true of other cities uh -huh. as well. The reserve units are different. Okay. We have different rules and procedures sure. and things, but there are a lot of similarities too. And a reserve unit generally is a support organization for the police department. It is volunteers. Okay. And and it's run by the well, it's controlled by the chief of police. Right. And so he would determine whether he wants it or not. Uh -huh. And so he could say at any time, I don't want reserves anymore and, mm -hmm. and we could disband um, because it's at his discretion. But uh, generally, you like to have reserves as uh, a surplus of bodies oh, when you need sure. them. Right? So we're, we're not working full time. We're not out on the streets uh, working like, like sworn officers right, are. Right. But there are times when it's nice to have an auxiliary set of people that can oh, come oh, yeah. in and help. And so we do that. And we do it, well, really cheaply because <laughs> <clears throat> we're volunteers. Right. And so some of it, sometimes we might help out with events that the, that the patrol officers need help with. Right. And we could get called in to help with that. Um, but 
Other times it's just community events, ah. special events, uh, festivals. Uh, we, we help with a lot of those things. We get requests not only from New Hope, but from all of our oh. neighboring cities to help with their events as well. So right. their, their festivals, they might have uh, charitable organizations doing yeah. <coughs> marathons yeah. or something like that, and they need some, some officers to help control traffic, and right. that's a lot of what we do. <coughs> traffic and security, um, just a body in a uniform mm -hmm. a lot of times is, is all oh, you need. Oh, right, yeah, just your presence, right? Yes, yeah, so, so that's been around for all that time, and it's changed over the years oh, in terms of, of what we do. Um, especially, I think, you know, four or five years ago when there were a lot of police assassinations oh, and things right, like that, right. uh, the reserve officers were, were pulled back a little uh -huh. bit, right? So um, I think that's generally true of all police departments. Uh -huh. They wanted to make sure that their reserve officers weren't put into uh, line of fire, uh, so to speak. Yeah. <clears throat> but, we, but we still are pretty active in New uh -huh. Hope, and I think most of the reserve units around here are as well. I think, uh, from what I can tell, New Hope is probably a little more active okay. than most of the other units in, in what we do. And what's the average size of your reserve group? Uh, <clears throat> we would say that our optimal size for a reserve uh -huh. unit is 12 to 18 people. Okay. Uh, and we haven't been that large for a little while. We haven't been to 18. I, I've been on it for 12 years, uh -huh. and I think we hit 18 once. Okay for a few months. Um, but mo right now we're down to six, and that largely that's because we bring in uh, law enforcement students. Ah, right, <clears throat> this is, there right. are a lot of the people that like to come and join a Certainly. reserve and get some experience, Certainly. build up their resume, and I get that. Uh, but they tend to be short timers. They're, ah. they're around for one to two years and right. then they're gone. Uh, I am not a law enforcement student, yeah. and I've been around for 12 years. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, we like to have both kinds of people. Oh, of so you like to have community-minded people, citizens that that want to volunteer right. for the community, and and come and help. Um, that but they they bring the stability oh, and the course. constancy to the sure. to the unit, and then the. Uh, the law enforcement students, the young people, they bring the energy. Yeah. Okay, now the, we'll talk a little bit about the police department and the police reserve. How, how do they function together? The, the chief of police is overall, but Correct. then how do you interrelate between the two groups? Well, in, in New Hope, again, we're, we're not, all, not all reserve units are the same, but in New Hope, we have set it up such that we have a rank structure. Okay. So I'm the captain. Right. Captains report to the chief. So strictly speaking, we report to the chief of police, <clears throat> and and we do things at his discretion. Now he has the option, and he's he's exercised it of right. appointing a, a reserve liaison or oh, a liaison right, officer. Right. Right. So one of the, our our sergeants, our police sergeants, is a liaison with us, and so we deal a lot with him, and that's uh -huh. the chief's choice. And so we act as, well, we're really auxiliary police officers. Uh -huh. you know, um, and part of the reason we go through a lot of training is we need to know what our roles are. Ah, we are right, not right. sworn police officers, right, and we right. don't do the same things. And so we have to go through some time to explain what things we can do as ah, reserve officers and what things we can't certainly. do. And, and what expectations we have. And uh, for that most part, when we go on patrol, for instance, there's a sergeant in charge of the patrol, and we as reserve officers report to him. Even though I'm captain, I right. report to right. whoever the officer in charge is. Okay. My rank doesn't mean much when I'm on <laughs> patrol. <clears throat> so yeah, I, re I report to the officer in charge, is usually a sergeant. And, and we do what they, what they need us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when calls come in, they get first dibs on the calls because okay. they're, it's their responsibility. Sure. Uh, if they get overwhelmed and they need some help in handling some of the calls, we'll take, we'll take some of the calls, like uh, medical calls right. or animal calls, or we'll back them up on their calls. Oh, certainly. We, we do a lot of that. So, uh, but that's, that's kind of at the direction. Now, right. it, at times they might s find some things and say, reserve officers, I remember when, when it was really slippery for a while, oh, a couple right. years ago, it was right. really icy. And, they, and the officer in charge told the reserve, reserves, 
don't go on Highway 169 <laughs> because there's going to be a lot of right. lots of accidents there, right. and they didn't want us oh, right. taking responsibility for those. That's they said that's the state patrol. Right. Okay, and I get that, right? So we're at their direction, and they can give us limitations if they want, oh, or, or or they can ask us to do anything that they want. So does it all <clears throat> go through you out to the other people, or do the other layers of people contact that same person? Well. You got to remember, there's only usually two of us on right. patrol at okay. a time, okay. and it's not always me. Okay. So, and so that's why I say my rank doesn't make make right. much difference, right. other than over the other officers. Usually uh -huh. a senior reserve officer and a junior reserve okay. officer out there, and the e senior each, one each evening or daytime. Yeah, each okay. each night that we're on okay. patrol, there's a pair of us, and we go out on patrol, and we report to the officer in charge, the sergeant in charge. Right. Um, and, and a matter of fact, on a given call, if we uh, go to a traffic stop, for instance, right. <clears throat> uh, we don't make traffic stops, but uh -huh. we can back up uh -huh. officers on their traffic okay, stops. Gotcha. We report to the officer in charge of right. that traffic stop. So we, we need to know our place. Oh, right. That's part right. of being a reserve officer. You don't just barge in and start <laughs> taking over. Uh, if, if we stop to assist a police officer, they're in charge of that event, and we do what they, what they say. And Obviously, we don't want to get in the way. Right, right. Fill in where they need where they need an extra hand or another body. Correct. Right. Yes. And then, what happens on like emergency call outs? Well, when there's an emergency call out, <clears throat> there's some kind of situation that they just need more bodies. Okay. All right, and there are a number of these. They're, they're all different kinds. Um, over the years, I can recall being called out several times for. SWAT situations okay. where SWATs got a house on on lockdown or oh, one time right. Cooper High School was on lockdown oh, because sure. there was a, a shooter nearby right and so then we come in and we don't usually get involved when there's right. shooters because right. we're not supposed to be involved when there's guns because we don't carry oh, guns right. but we might be we might be called in to help hold the parameter or, oh, or control sure, traffic sure. around the situation we won't get involved with right. the actual shooter himself uh, same thing if there's a fire or a bad traffic accident, we might just need to go manage traffic and uh -huh. control who can get in and out. So there's a lot of that. Um, one time, a couple of years ago, it was really bad weather, uh -huh. icy roads, and there were just a lot of traffic accidents. Oh, sure. And the, and the officers that were on patrol that evening said, you know, we, c we could spend all night just handling all right. these traffic accidents. So they called in the reserves uh -huh. just, just to be there uh, extra bodies, right, and they right. say, just go take care of the tra traffic yeah. accidents. Get them out of the ditch. Call the tow trucks. Get them on their way. And so that was that was one case where we did that. Oh, certainly. We could also get called in if there's a homicide, oh. <clears throat> and and they need to investigate it, and they sure. need someone just to kind of secure the area. Yeah. And then, it, that's again controlling traffic. Of if course. there's if there's car traffic involved, or it might just be controlling pedestrians and yeah. keeping gawkers oh. away. <laughs> right. Now, I thought we'd talk a little bit so that people out there can be aware of what are the qualifications in New Hope to become a police officer. Can you tell us a little about a little bit about the age, education, <clears throat> citizenship, about those requirements? Sure. We have about 10 or 11 requirements, and I might forget one or two of yeah. them along the way here, but um, in New Hope, uh, we like to start our reserve age at 21. Okay. Uh, we like to have people that are reasonably mature. Uh-huh. Not every reserve unit does that. Okay. Some reserve units will take you at 18. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and so if you're in school and you're 18, 19 years old and you want to get in a reserve unit, there's one for you. Not in New Hope. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but but there are units that, that um, take you at 18. Uh, we like to have them at 21. Part of the reason for that is because we also have an explorer unit, which, oh, is the, right, which are the right, young right. students, high school students yeah. that are interested in becoming police officers. And you can be an explorer until you're 21. Uh -huh. And so that's part of the reason why right. we don't start until we're 21. We don't want to have an overlap and have people saying, hey, should I be explorer or should I be reserve or should I be both right it's, it really shouldn't be an option yeah so that's part of the reason we do that we also I think in New Hope are a bit more active than some other uh -huh. units and so we just like to get people that are a little more mature right a little more seasoned <clears throat> and so our age limit is 21 we don't have an upper limit 
Okay. <clears throat> uh, we don't say, you know, once you hit 40, you're, you're good, which is good because I started when I was 42. Ah. <clears throat> so uh, I'm, I'm 54 now and I'm planning to be a reserve officer for another 10 years or so probably. Oh, so, well, so then the people out there that are coming to retirement age, keep this in certainly. mind. Yeah, we, ha we have no upper limits. So if you're 60, right. 65 and you're still in good right. physical condition, uh, sure. So that's one of the other requirements. You have to be in good physical okay. condition. This doesn't mean you have to run a marathon, because if, if so, I'd have to drop out now. <laughs> <clears throat> but you do need to be able to, you know, lift a little bit of right. weight, be right. able to walk around. So uh, if, you're, if you're severely injured, you know, well, no, you could maybe take a leave of absence if right. you just need to mend. But no, we need people that can get around. Right. You might need to chase somebody. Um, Usually you don't do that by yourself, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we need uh, capable people. Um, we would need, before we accept somebody into our unit full time, we would need a note from a doctor that says, oh, you sure. know, you're not going to fall over yeah. with, <laughs> with congenital heart disease right, or something. Right. Um, so we don't want to bring you in if it's going to endanger mm -hmm. your life. Right. <clears throat> so uh, we asked for a note from a doctor, but you have to have a good criminal record, which, okay. which means no crim no crimes right, right or very few crimes and uh we need a good driving record and i always point out to people that doesn't mean it has to be pristine okay <clears throat> you're not being a sworn officer here uh -huh. you're, you're being a uh a reserve officer and you might have a blemish in your past um i always tell people if you had a dwi mm -hmm. it was five years ago and you're not going to do it again right we're probably okay with that uh -huh. if you had a dwi two months ago uh -huh. you might want to think twice yeah. uh, you know go go clean up your life right. a little bit and then right. come back later so uh, a, a blemish is okay a lot of blemishes probably uh -huh. not okay. okay and then and then we would have to do an interview okay so we have to interview with the reserve board which is uh -huh. uh, all the ranking officers on the reserves would interview you uh, and if you do have a blemish, you got to convince us that you're right. a changed person. Yeah. You're not, you know, it, or it was a youthful indiscretion yeah. and now you're mature. Right. These are all good things. Oh, of so, course. <clears throat> um, we want to bring in good people that are capable. We don't want, uh, we don't want to have uh, a scandal. Oh, right. <clears throat> you can understand that. So that's some of the things that we, uh, we need. You do need to be a U.S. citizen. Oh, sure. Um, you need to have a driver's license because, believe it or not, we actually drive uh -huh. when we're on patrol. Right, right. So uh, we need to have that and a good driving record. I think I mentioned that uh -huh. already. And um, let's see. Uh, we need to have an interview. You do need to live nearby. Okay. <clears throat> um, and that's because we have emergency call-outs, which right, we, we right, talked about. Right, so right. Uh, if the officers are like, oh, we... We just had this horrible accident. We need some reserve officers here right now to help us manage traffic and shut down these roads. Three hours from now is not a good time. It's going to work, right, <clears throat> yeah. right. So obviously it takes a little bit of time for us to get uh -huh. in. Uh, I live reasonably close, and I, the absolute fastest I can get there is 10 minutes. Uh -huh. um, so th they wouldn't expect us to be in there faster than 20 minutes right. or so. But if you live in St. Paul, then you wouldn't, yeah. it's, it's not very conducive right. to, to being called in. So um, we usually say close enough is if you live in New Hope, that's close enough. Uh -huh. <laughs> or if you live in an adjacent city, oh, certainly. that's close enough. Certainly. Further than that, we would, we would have to say, we'd have to consider it. Right. And uh, you'd probably be taking yourself out of position for yeah. any emergency call-outs. Yeah. But you could still be involved in other mm -hmm. festivals and patrols oh, and things. Certainly. So I'm not saying it's out of the question, but, but adjacent cities are, mm -hmm. is best. Sure. And then they have to uh, volunteer, do, volunteer to do a certain number of hours per month? Yeah, that's right. In, in order um, to stay week. in good standing right. <clears throat> in our unit, we ask for 100 hours a year. Okay. And that's all all activities. Right. So uh, usually we patrol uh, on uh, weekends, Friday okay. and Saturday nights, and we schedule that. So a patrol is usually about like seven and a half, eight mm -hmm. hours. And then we have a monthly meeting, okay. which you usually get two hours of credit for. Sure. So if you did one patrol and one meeting each month, 
That's pretty much your 100 hours for the year. Oh, yeah, and that's a kind of a minimum because you have a lot of people that choose to put in more hours than that, right? Yeah, believe it or not, when people join the reserves, they're actually usually pretty excited about yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah. And so uh, and there's a bunch of training you have to take. If you're going to stay around right. for a while, there's uh, a lot of classes to take uh, and skills to get. And then there's going to be all these festival requests. They usually right. come in in June, July. Wow. All summer long. And all summer the long is there's lots of requests yeah. for that. And so there's, there are a lot of city activities, community activities, mm -hmm. charitable organizations. American Cancer Society, I think, has a Relay for Life. And uh, in New Hope, we have Can Do Canines right. as a woofaroo. So there's all these uh, charitable organizations with their events. And we get requests to help them. There's, Golden Valley has a bunch of events. Yeah. Um, all the neighboring cities ask us to help them with their festivals, and we try to. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and the more people we have, the more events we oh, can accommodate. Well, and we certainly, I as a captain, do not go to all these events. I go to, you know, four or five right. during the summer, sure. is whatever I can do. And the more people we have, the more events that we can accommodate. We might only send one or two people to right. some of these events. But the cities are usually appreciated if we send anybody. Oh, I bet. Because they need I a bet. lot of people right. for some of these pr parades right. and festivals that they have. Oh, definitely. And then I was reading on your website that you cannot belong to another sheriff reserve <coughs> or fire department or already be an enforcement officer somewhere, right? That's correct. That's part of our rules. And there's a really simple reason for that. Um, if, if you're on the reserve unit for New Hope, and then you're on the uh, fire unit for Crystal. Right. And there's a community emergency. Uh oh. <laughs> do you go as a New Hope Reserve Officer right. or do you go as a Crystal Firefighter? Right. 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 So we try, we try to eliminate that as a possibility. <clears throat> um, I think at times in the past they've, they've allowed it because it's been kind of marginal. Sure. Uh, but it, what are the chances it's going to be a problem? I don't know. But that's just been right, our, our right. rule. Because um, you're supposed to be answering to one person. And if you have oh, two certainly. separate jobs. Right. Now, if you have an actual job, um, I, I guess I should point out that not everybody is in law enforcement. Oh, of course. Right. Full yeah. time. You've got a whole range of people, right? Right. So uh, it's a volunteer position as a reserve right. officer. So y y obviously, uh, I get a call out mm -hmm. for an emergency. I can't always go. Yeah, I'm I'm downtown working in my office, or I'm out of town on a business trip, sure. or I'm on vacation. Yeah, I can't go, <clears throat> uh, and I'm not obligated to go. I'm a volunteer. I go when I can. Uh -huh. And you, what I usually find is that if I send out a call out request to my reserve right. unit, there are two or three people that are going to go. Uh -huh. I'm I'm ready to go. Uh -huh. I'm ready to go. I cannot get the whole unit to go oh, to anything. Right, it's, right. it's almost impossible. Oh, I, nowadays, I couldn't see that. We have widely varied schedules, and uh, you know, I myself am a software engineer. Ah. So, uh, <clears throat> you might you might think I'm I'm this felt uh, ah. ambitious police right. officer, but no, I'm a software engineer. So, uh, I'm often down programming downtown, sure. and, and so if there's a call out during the day, I can't go, or it comes at two in the morning. Oh, right. Oh. W w willingly. And sometimes we can't accommodate sure. a request. That's just the way it goes. Now, let's tell people a little bit about how to apply. You, <clears throat> first, sure. you do a phone interview with people? Well, <clears throat> yeah, I, I just did this today, as a matter of fact. I, I got an email from someone saying, hey, I, I'm really interested in joining the New Hope uh -huh. Police Reserves. And I'm excited because I want I want to get some right, people in. Right. Uh, and he's a, a student in uh, North Hennepin, and <clears throat> so I thought, well, here's where the application is. Right. I can point him to the application. Right. It's on a website. Um, but I'm going to ask you to fill out an application. We're going to get a background check. We're going to do an interview. But you know what? I might be able to tell you right away that you're not right for our unit. Right. Right. And save us both a lot of trouble. So I just, as a matter of course, schedule a phone interview, right. a short phone interview, and a start asking them about themselves. What are you doing? Um, and sometimes I find out, oh, they don't have a driver's license. Ah, we need a driver's license. Right. Right. So come back after you get a driver's yeah. license. Or I'm 18 years old. Or I'm not a U.S. citizen. Uh -huh. Right. So it, it, all it takes is a very short oh, discussion certainly, to, certainly. to say, oh, I appreciate your interest, but you, you really don't fit with us right, right now. 
<clears throat> and so I like to get that resolved right away with a with a Makes short sense. interview. It's just an informal thing where I tell them what we do, right? And they tell me about themselves. And another nice thing is they find out what we do as oh, a unit, right. and they might might decide. Oh, you, that sounds really lame. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to do that. Right. I want to. I want to go work for the FBI, yeah. right? And this this stuff's not very exciting. No. Oh, okay, you know, some people right. are that way. Oh, of course. They got to be. They got to be where the action is. I'm not going to say that we we don't have some action, but um, we don't go looking for it. Right. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, we find out right away if there's a good fit. Okay. So we'll have your uh, email up so people can email you okay. and get in, you can get in contact together and then people can also contact and we'll put this up to Sergeant Qu Chris Swadja did yes. I pronounce that right? And yeah. we'll put his phone number up too so people have someone they can contact sure. if they're watching our show and want to pursue this a little further. Yeah, Sergeant Swadja is our reserve liaison Okay, officer. right. To so. the chief. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then the application form, where do they find that? Well, that is on the website, okay. or if, if anybody stopped by the police department and asked for one, oh, I think they sure. got them in a drawer right oh, next okay. to the right next to the desk. But, uh, but it, yeah, it's on the website. If you just search for New Hope Police Reserves uh -huh. application, I think it comes right up. Okay, so they can get that because <clears throat> that's part of the process. Yep. And then tell us a little bit more about the formal interview because then you, who who makes up your reserve board because that's who's going to give sure. the formal interview. The reserve board is all the ranking officers in the reserve unit. Okay. Okay, so that's captain, uh -huh. lieutenant, or sergeant. Okay. And right now we have four. Uh -huh. We have a captain, a lieutenant, right. and two sergeants. So that's the reserve board, and then, of course, there's the liaison officer who's involved right. in a lot of our decisions. <clears throat> and so we will have an interview. It doesn't have to be the whole reserve board, but it has to be oh. comprised of reserve oh. board members, okay. uh, at least two of them, okay. plus the reserve liaison. And we'll, we'll bring them into the police department and have an interview oh, for a sure. half hour to an hour. Right. Um, you learn a little more about somebody when you're talking to them in person than when you're right, talking to them over definitely. the phone. So it's, this is a, just another good step. And this is in our bylaws that we, uh -huh. this is how we interview people. And so we'll talk to them then about, <clears throat> about their job qualifications uh -huh. and their, their goals, uh, whether it's right. Of course, I've talked over a lot of this with them already, right, so I don't right. think there's any, any misjudgment. But we'll also ask them just a bunch of questions just to kind of see how sure. they how they react to people and what their personality is like, uh, what their likes and dislikes. Again, just trying to see how good a fit they're oh, going to be. Oh, right. With the, the reserve unit and the police department has a certain personality. Yeah, because <clears throat> so if somebody joined and they didn't fit, they're not going to be happy anyway. That's right? right. That's right. So if we're a very restrained reserve unit, uh -huh. And that's the way the chief wants it. Right. And we get somebody who's very aggressive, yeah. then they probably aren't going to fit. Right. On the other hand, if we were a really aggressive unit and we were yeah. really out there, and I think at one time New Hope was, yeah. but it's been pulled back. But if we were really aggressive and you were like, I don't want to ever, ever get into a confrontation, then you probably wouldn't be right for our unit yeah. either. Right. So right. It, it, we're kind of in the middle, I think, right. but, uh, but we're not very aggressive anymore. Right. Well, I want to thank you so much. We've gotten a lot of information to people out there, so sure. we hope they'll pursue it, and we'll get a few more people contacting you to join. All right, great. And we'll ask that you tune in next week for part two on the police reserve, and we're glad that you've been with us. Bye.